25. Convert the values of KC to values of KP, or the values of KP to values of KC. And then they give us letter A. So in this case, they gave us a balanced equation with the corresponding KC value at a certain temperature. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit bigger just so that we could work with it. So we have N2 gas plus 3H2 gas. And this comes to equilibrium because it's a double arrow with two ammonias, NH3, and that's a gas. Okay. Now, this is a pretty specific question, right? Seems like we just want to convert one equilibrium constant to another, right? Since they gave us the KC value, I would be working over here. We just have to convert from the KC. So maybe I'll just write that down. We just want to convert the KC into the KP. Well, how do we do that? It's a pretty simple formula. There's only one formula. So just memorizable, it's this one right here. This is the only formula that has a KP value and the KC value in the same formula. So we got to use that. Now let's just write down what we have. We have the KC value, so I know that this right here is going to be 0 0.50. We're solving for the KP, right? So that means that I should know all these other different things. Now, the next is an R value. In R values, there are two R values in all of chemistry, right? And they're just memorizable. Now, just know that since we're working with pressures and gases, we have to use the R value that's standard with the gases and the pressures. That's 0 0.0821. We are not using the 8.314 R value because we're not talking about energy. So that's the difference. The temperature, T, capital T is the temp, However, this needs to be in Kelvin. If you're using this formula, it's got to be in Kelvin. They gave us a temperature at 400 degrees Celsius, but we know how to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, right? We just got a plus 273. I mean, you can add 273.15, but as of right now, you know, we could simplify it, right? So 400 plus 273 is 673 Kelvin, and that's the number that's going down here. 673 Kelvin. Last thing is we got to find out what that delta N gas value is. Well, I gave the, the formula over here. Delta N, remember, just like delta T, it's change um, in one thing to another. In this case, it's the N gas of the products minus the N gas of the reactants. And remember, N just means moles. N is the unit that they use for moles. So it's products minus reactants. So let's see. Maybe I'll just put the number over here. So how many moles of the products do we have? Keep in mind that we only care about the gases. In this case, they're all gases, so we have to take every single one of them. So maybe I'll, maybe, ah. I think, actually, maybe I'll bring this down a little bit. What? What happened there? Okay. Now, how many moles of the gas do we have on the product side? Well, there was a big two in the front. That means that I just have two moles of the gas, right? So I have two moles of the gas of the product. And now how many moles of the total gas do I have of the reactant? Well, there's two of them, so I have to add them together. There was no number in the front here. That means that there's one mole. And then I see that I have a three here. So one, literally plus three, is four total moles. So I have four total moles for the reactant side. I got two total moles for the product side. Remember, delta N is products minus reactants. So the delta N gas, the number that we're going to raise it to, is two minus four, product minus reactant. So this would be a negative two, and that's totally okay. You can get negative values for that exponent. So let's just plug everything in. Kp equals 0 0.50, that's the Kc value, and now it's R times T, 0 0.0821 
times 673, and both of that is going to be raised to the negative 2. Calc-ies out. Now, my suggestion is, you know, always do this multiplication first because there's literally two numbers in here, right? It's the R times the T, and then you raise it to the negative 2. So 0 0.0821 times um, 673. I get basically, if I just write it out for you guys, I get 55.2533, and that's raised to the negative 2. So now you can basically simplify it. Raise this to the negative 2, and then just times it by 0.5. Remember, this is just like PEMDAS rules. So P KP equals, let's see, this number raised to the negative 2, and then I'm going to take that number and times it by 0.5. And looks like they only gave me two sig figs for the KC. So I'm just going to give two sig figs for the KP. I see that I got a 1.6 and then times 10 to the negative fourth. And that's it. Just know that KCs and KPs, they have no uh, units. They're just constant values that have no units because they're acting as like a ratio. And there you go. So... Hopefully that helped, guys. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in later lessons. Bye-bye.